So check this out guys, I have gotten a ton of questions about solo diving. A few months ago we did a video on solo diving where I went into some shallow water reefs with a full face mask and kind of talked about solo diving. Since then I've definitely gotten a lot of questions on it. So I thought I'd do a video about solo diving while heading out to some shipwrecks here in Butler Bay on St. Croix. So stick with me. Solo or self-reliant diving is full of challenges and I quickly find that filming myself while solo diving makes it even that more challenging. Before we go on, let's define what solo or self-reliant diving is. It is diving alone without the support or assistance from a dive buddy or team. One of the frequent questions I get is, does self-reliant diving replace the buddy system? And the answer is no. In fact, becoming a self-reliant diver can make you a better buddy. It does require mental discipline, the right attitude, and redundant equipment, but it also can be a ton of fun. So I gotta watch my navigation as I head out here in open water, but guys, for some great detailed information on how to set up some solo diving equipment, definitely check out Everything Scuba. Their channel over there with Lyle and Josh is fantastic. They've done tons of videos on setting up some different scuba diving equipment for solo diving. But I'm gonna talk about the basics here as we head out. So first and foremost, I have a redundant air source with me today. Because I'm going deep, probably down to about 90 feet or so, I brought a 19 cubic foot pony bottle with me that I've mounted with a bracket onto the side of my aluminum 80. <clears throat> I have a separate pressure gauge that I've checked to make sure everything's on and working and has gas in it. I've also got my regulator right here around my neck should I ever need that. It's a redundant air source only in case of emergency for me. I'm not using it to extend my dive in any way, shape or form. But if something goes wrong with my primary equipment setup, I've got this right here, right under my chin, ready to go. I'm also carrying a backup mask with me today. I've got my primary mask right here, but uh, I've got a backup mask in a pocket. Also have a couple knives, one up here on my shoulder. Lastly, it's not really in the solo diving equipment repertoire, but uh, I'm kicking out into the open ocean by myself, which, uh, yeah, may not be advisable, but uh, here we go anyway. So out here, if I get stuck out here, that's going to be a problem. So I've got with me a Garmin InReach Mini, which is a GPS tracker and SOS transmitter. It uses the Iridium satellite network to communicate my position should I hit that SOS button. From there it'll go to a call center and they're gonna they're gonna call on the cavalry to come pick me up i think at least i hope i don't want to use it today but better to have it than not i've also got with me today a reel and a dsmb or delayed surface marker buoy you can also use that just as a surface marker buoy so that any boat traffic can see me we have very very minimal boat traffic out here but nonetheless i definitely want to be seen if a boat should come my way and i gotta make sure that I'm still headed in the right direction it looks absolutely gorgeous today the visibility is incredible below me so today's mission is to head down in about 70 feet of water and drop on a 144 foot uh, trawler that doesn't have any superstructure on it called the second mate My plan is to then cut across the sand to another pair of deeper wrecks, a 177 foot long freighter, and a tugboat. From there I have to navigate back over 300 yards underwater to shore over an almost featureless seagrass and hard pan coral bottom. Descending on the stern of the Suffolk Maid, it's incredible how clear the water is today. Recently, I've also been asked a lot why I choose to dive solo. 
but responsible, independent scuba diving is not for everyone. But as an experienced diver, I choose to solo dive sometimes to be able to spend the time to get the video or photos I'm looking for. My choice of redundant dive equipment is even configured on my desire for photography and videography. Instead of slinging another tank in front of me, I've moved mine behind me so it's out of the way from my camera and I can actually hover as low to the bottom as I'd like while still knowing my backup air source is hanging just around my neck. Leaving the bow of the Suffolk made behind me, I descend to the bottom and enjoy my favorite part of the dive, which is seeing the Rosa Maria looming in the distance. Pause for a moment and pick up a carabiner. If you've lost one yet here, comment below. I've got it. Swimming out to the wrecks is not the only way to get out here and explore them. There are several dive boats that depart Frederickstead on the west end of the island including St. Croix Ultimate Blue Water Adventures and Neptune Scuba Diving. We've got links below in the description. Heading up the open bow section of the Rosa Maria, I navigate down the entire length of the cargo area. Looking over the port side, the Coakley Bay is clearly visible and looks as if she's underway while sitting on the seafloor. Diving is a social sport, and diving with others can bring immense joy by sharing the experience of being underwater together. But solo diving is fun in a different way. It's so peaceful underwater and there is no better way to escape the stress and pressure of life on the surface than to spend some time alone and decompress underwater. Self-reliant diver training can also help make you a better buddy or dive team member because you learn to rely on yourself first and then others. Moving into an overhead environment, such as the entryway here, is not safe or advisable alone. But divers who have undergone self-reliant diver training are better prepared to handle emergency situations such as a buddy separation when diving inside of shipwrecks. Today, I'm only going to look in the wreck, as the Rosa Maria is a hazardous overhead environment, even when diving with others. Looking up at the superstructure is absolutely breathtaking. I had been planning this dive for several days, but decided not to attempt it until everything came into alignment for a safe dive. The best way to be self-reliant is to stay out of trouble in the first place. So my equipment had to be in fully working order, and I 
verified this during my pre-dive inspection. Second, I spent a lot of time over the week ahead of this dive visualizing it and conducting a risk assessment at every step, anticipating problems and planning to avoid them. Lastly, the environmental conditions had to be perfect. I'm already intimately familiar with this dive site and know that it is prone to currents and the seas while swimming out can be really choppy. I scrubbed the dive on two previous occasions because of the conditions, but today conditions were perfect and everything came into alignment for a safe dive. Coming up on the Copley Bay, I'm cognizant of the fact that my primary limiting factor at this point in the dive is my bottom time. So I rise up to explore the top deck of the tugboat. A school of Atlantic spadefish call this wreck home and are here to greet me every time I visit. to watch the mooring line that is tied to a ball on the surface. It's pointed from south to north, which helps me confirm the direction of the current. It also has a lot of slack in the line, indicating a fairly weak current. Lastly, it's not bouncing up and down, which tells me the surface conditions only have a light chop to them. Everything is looking good for my underwater swim back to shore. But first I descend to check out the massive propeller underneath the Copley Bay. Take my return heading and loosely follow the Coakley Bay's anchor line back to the seagrass beds. Being self-sufficient can also be beneficial when traveling alone as you may get paired up with a dive buddy you've never met before. It's possible you don't have the same skill sets or experiences or even the same dive objectives. So being self-sufficient as a diver is to your advantage. Spinning around, everything looks the same in all directions and it's easy to see how quickly you could get lost out here. Trusting my compass, I regain my heading and navigate in. shallow water, I check out an overhang with a school of French grunts and then pop up on the surface. Make sure to check out our other video on diving the deep wrecks here at Butler Bay. And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification so that you never miss a dive. But we will see you next time underwater. <laughs>